Google Docs. Love it or hate it, you have to hand it to Google. They have done a pretty good job of giving us a free word processor that really does the job. So my goal for today's video is to share with you the eight, I'm gonna call them coolest features in Google Docs. Now I don't know for sure that these are the eight coolest features. I think that's very much a personal choice. These are the eight features that I think are the coolest features in Google Docs. I would love to hear the ones that you think are cooler if indeed there are other features that you think may be cooler than the ones that I'm gonna share with you. But today, the eight coolest features that are part of Google Docs on Dottotech. Steve Dotto here, how the heck you doing this fine day? And I, I kind of hesitate calling this the eight coolest features in Google Docs, because as I say, I don't know if they're the coolest features, but they're eight really useful things that I think are worth exploring in Google Docs. Would love to hear if you have other things that you think are very cool, share them in the comments, and we will make sure to index this video so you can jump ahead to any of these features uh, and see them at your leisure. We're gonna start with one that is, I, I think maybe flies under the horizon a little bit, but I will say this that if you are a parent of a student, especially a younger student that's say using Google Classroom, this can be a lifesaver. This can turn you into the hero parent of all times. Here's what happens sometimes in a online word processor like Google Docs, is kids or yourself, you'll be writing away on a document and something will happen. You will hit a key, you will accidentally select all and delete it. Uh, you will make some changes and all of a sudden you have lost a bunch of work. It's the kind of modern equivalent of my dog ate the homework is all of a sudden everything will have disappeared. And this can cause incredible panic and in, in just, just a lot of anxiety in both uh, parents and children if the kid's been working on a project for quite a while and it disappears. But there's a surefire way to save the day. And that is by going under the file menu in Google Docs, you have something called version history. Version history is freaking brilliant. You can go and you can see the history of the document because Google Docs auto saves it on a regular basis. So you can scroll back into the history of this document and you can bring forward the last saved version or an earlier saved version, which all of the work should be in place for. As I say, if you are a parent, this can become a hero moment. And I am speaking from personal experience. This is a terrific feature. My number one cool feature is history in Google Docs. The second feature that I really like in Google Docs is one that I think sometimes causes some confusion. It's the style menu. It's the text style menu, which we see here inside of the toolbar. Here in the style menu, we have the ability to apply different attributes to different pieces of text. Now, a lot of people, I think, get this a little bit confused with formatting, where we go through and we change the font and we change the boldness and the color of text throughout a document. Now, while you can do some of those and create some consistency in the formatting using the style menu, the style menu is really designed for navigation, for helping us structure the document in a way that we can navigate through it for actually a couple of different purposes when we're done with the document or even while we're creating the document. Allow me to dive a little bit deeper. The things like the title and the headings, if you create a title on a document, it will appear here in the outline as the title. And each of the, uh, each of the say subheadings appear as subheadings and kind of tabbed information. So we can see that we've assigned different attributes. See, this is heading two that we've assigned to this piece of text. This allows us to navigate through complex documents through this outline very quickly. And that's terrific for in the content creation process as you're writing and editing a document. But all of these attributes carry through as well when you go to publish a document, either to a website or if you wanted to say publish a, a PDF document or even a book, these can be used to create a table of contents and some organizational structure for that as well. Now, when I said that it also creates some consistency in formatting, you can go through and you can change the font, you can change the orientation, you can change everything about the font within the, within the, within the document itself. If we say wanted to change uh, the uh, heading one from being this font to a different font, let's choose Comic Sans because that's always irritating to use. Then what you can do is you can go under this drop-down menu and you can go into heading one and you can update the heading to match. What that will do is every time that you assign that heading to another, to another, uh, well, you can see it's updated it here, or if I assign it to another, to another block of text and I go assign 
heading one, it will then carry through the formatting. So it, it gives us the structure, but it also carries the formatting at the same time. So I think that these style menus are very powerful. The more that you use them, especially in longer documents, the more organized you are, both in the creation process and in the publishing process. You know, super cool feature number two is the text style menu. The third and fourth cool features come down to collaboration, how we you collaborate to create uh, documents with a team. And this is one of the areas that right from the very beginning, Google Docs excelled. So we've got a couple of different options that we can look at. Now, the first is you have to get comfortable with this menu here in the top right corner. This is the sharing menu within Google Docs, and this is where you choose who has permission to view the document you're editing and working on and what permission they have as far as editing and making changes. And you set all of that here by making people either editors or commenters or viewers. Viewers can just see and read a document. Uh, editors can, of course, make changes. And commenters can just comment and give you feedback on what's in a document. Now, you can always add comments to documents by just moving your cursor over to the right-hand side and either adding a comment in a document or suggesting and edit within a document. And this allows people to then add, so if I, sorry, let me, if I add a suggested edit, it will then, I will type in, and you see how it's been parsed out so that it's a, a green color and it's been, and, and we see that there is a, a, a note here that says Steve is suggesting this change. So that can be accepted by the author of the document by clicking on accept suggestions, or you can start a conversation saying, are you sure? And then you can start an actual, uh, sure. Uh, you can start a conversation happening within the document. This allows a wonderful collaboration to appear as you work your way through the document. So this combination of being able to share documents with others and determine exactly what permissions they have in sharing or the ability to comment or suggest in a document allows you to create a great collaborative environment with Google Docs, which is, I think, really one of the ultimate strengths of this particular application. So sharing, commenting, and suggesting are the, the probably, that could be three tips, I guess. Within our team here at Dottotech, we use Google Docs every single day with the whole team. And one technique we use is what I call master documents. These are the documents that contain all of the details for all of the different events, for the webinars and the tutorials that we deliver. And they're documents that have all the information in one place so everybody on the team can access the links or the information they need at any time in the master document. And they can add to it anything that is in their response area of responsibility to add. And we use to structure those documents, tables. I love the tables in Google Docs. I would be lost without them. And so this is an actual working document. This is our event document that we use here at Dottotech. And we've got templates here for everything that we do, for our Foundational Friday webinars, for our Webinar Wednesdays, all of that we have these templates for. And what happens is every week we create uh, a structure for them. We, we fill in all of the information that's needed for creating each of these events. And so anybody who needs the description or the links or the time or the graphics or the thumbnail graphic, they're all inside of these tables. And you will notice that we use all of the different styles in order to navigate through. So if I need to look at what's happening coming up in two weeks, I can just jump straight to that particular event or that particular item by navigating through the table of contents that we have here. So we see the different features starting to come together. But the ability to, to shade the individual cells within the table and quickly modify the table to suit our needs is something that I really like within Google Docs. So you see here, this is just a simple table, but you see how we've edited and we've changed and we've merged cells to make it look to make it look e easy to understand and for us to quickly find the information that we're looking for. Let me just create a new document here and I'll quickly show you how easy it is to edit tables. So I'm going to start with a new document. What you do is you create a table under the insert menu, you choose table, and then you just choose how many cells you want it wide and high. And don't worry about it because you can always add more later. You just right click on the mouse. You can insert rows above or below or columns to the left or right. So you can always modify the size of a table. 
Now, if we highlight any of the, uh, any of the cells, we can do things like uh, creating a background color to the table. We can adjust the text within the table, et cetera. So we can add structure to it, or we can add visual representation very quickly. And this is one of the best features. You can take the table and you can select any of the cells by right clicking the mouse, you can go down and you can merge the cells. So you can create uh, logical flows of information within the cells by doing this. So tables for me create so much structure and they create a real confidence within our team that we can find the information we need uh, very quickly and very easily by navigating, by using the, the combination of the text styles to be able to jump to the table or to the content that's necessary. And then the table gives us the structure so that we find the information that we require in the proper location. Tables, I just love them. They are, they, Maybe they should be feature number one, but they're not that sexy, so I put them in the middle of the pack. The next up is text substitution, which serves us in three different areas. First of all, it well, what text substitution does is it takes a string of characters and it replaces them with another string of characters. So an identifiable string of characters gets substituted by another one. Now this works terrifically if you consistently misspell the same word over and over again. It'll correct the spelling for you automatically without having to go through spell check. Or if you have fat fingers and you do the same mistake on typos, you constantly type T-E-H instead of T-H-E, it will automatically substitute the correct spelling in for those sorts of, those sorts of typing errors. And the third area that it works really well in is automatically creating a string of text that is repeatable. Your web address or your physical address or an instruction set where you can create a, like a keyboard macro to automatically fill in that information. But I'll just show you quickly how it works. And here's, here's the scenario is I know most people that watch this channel think that I have a Canadian accent being Canadian and they think us Canadians uh, say about and you hear a boot. I don't know why you hear a boot when I say about. I hear a boat, but it turns out as I'm typing that I also type in a boot. I never realized that little known fact. So if I didn't want to correctly spell a boat, but I type in a boot, I can go through this process. I can uh, go into the substitutions under the tool menu, and there I can type in the misspelling or the word that I want corrected and the corrected word. When I save that now, every time I type with a Canadian accent and type in a boot, it will convert the text to a boat. It works just that easily. So text substitution can be used three ways, all three ways, tremendously useful uh, within Google Docs. There was a time that I thought this next cool feature would have been the coolest feature of all for any word processor, uh, but that, that passion for it has waned slightly, but it's still a very cool feature, and that is dictation. Now, Google has built in to, to Google Docs, uh, a, a dictation tool. If you go under the tools menu, you will find voice typing. They call it voice typing. If you invoke that and then you click to speak, you can then start to dictate to your heart's content and Google will do a pretty darn good job of recognizing exactly what you're saying and typing it out, period. Now you add punctuation by simply saying the punctuation, exclamation mark. It works quite well. The real challenge new paragraph, is thinking and writing at the same time, <laughs> comma. For some reason, I find it personally easier to, in written communications, actually type and in verbal communications, speak. And uh, there's not as much crossover between the two. I find when I write using voice dictation that it sometimes doesn't sound really professional, period but it's pretty awesome. And if you ever have a sore wrist or a broken arm, it will work really well, period. Voice typing, it is a cool feature. The last feature that I'm gonna share with you today is very cool, but it takes a little bit to get your head around. It's also found in the tools menu and it's this explore option. Now, Google has named this several different things through all of the different iterations of Google Docs. But Explore is a research tool and it really lends itself towards the world of academics. Allow me to show you. If you open the Explore menu, what it does is it opens a sidebar that allows you to do searches on content. So if you're doing research on a topic, if you're say searching for, um, how to spatchcock a chicken, it will search three different ways for us. 
It will search our own Google Drive, and I don't have any instructions on how to spatchcock a chicken on my Google Drive, but if I go to the web, it brings up web search, the results of a web search. Plus, there will be an image search, which will show you how to spatchcock a chicken. Um, I don't know why I chose that. I guess it's getting close to dinner time. But if once we find information that we think is good, we can read that information here, and we can take a look. And uh, for example, here it is. Uh, I agree to this. And if, if you, in your research, take any copy that you take from a website, you copy it and you put it into your document that you're editing. So what it does well is it takes that information and it allows us to add proper attributions to it. So what we can do is if we click here, it will add a footnote and it adds the footnote to it right there. If I click on this side, on the three dots, I can choose the different citation formats, MLA, APA, in Chicago. So if you are creating a blog post and you wanna give credit to an original document, or if you're actually doing research for an academic paper, this will speed up the process for all of your citations as well as using it as a research document. All of this, under the explore menu. As I said, it uh, it's a little bit deeper than you would think just at the beginning, just doing a search. It actually provides some additional functionality, especially in the citation area. So the last of the cool features for Google Docs is the explore feature. So that's my list of my eight features that I think are really cool within Google Docs. Some of them I use on a daily basis, other ones I just think are cool but I bet you have some others that are just as cool or even cooler than what I shared with you. So I invite you to share with me in the comments the features that you find most valuable inside of Google Docs. And with that, I hope you found today's video to be useful. If you have, please a like and a share is always appreciated. And if you've not yet subscribed to the Dotto Tech channel, now's your chance to do that. I wanna wrap things up by inviting you to join us for one of our Webinar Wednesday tutorials. As I mentioned, every week here at Dotto Tech, we host a tutorial webinar on some aspect of content creation or productivity. It's called Webinar Wednesday. The links are right here. You are invited, they are free. I hope to see you there. Till next time, I'm Steve Dotto. Have fun storming a castle.